Hello friends, welcome back. If you are new, my name is Dana and this is Dana Creates. And today I am going to talk about some things that I have wanted to talk about but also have been putting off. I've mentioned it a few times that I've gone to the doctor and gotten lab tests, now I'm taking medications. Like I wanna talk about things and yet I don't wanna talk about things. And really I've only told like a few people in person about what's going on with my health and it's because I can trust those people. I feel like if I'm going to do that here and sometimes it's easier because I'm just talking to a camera, I'm not actually talking to someone and then I kind of get the courage to upload the video and put it out into the world. But part of why I would like to talk about it here is to create the conversation and create a community of women to be able to openly talk about stuff that is hard to talk about. It's hard for me to do and hard for me to admit things with my help. It's hard to worry that I will get attacked or made fun of or ridiculed or put down. So I'm hoping if you're a troll coming here to give me a hard time, go away. I think that I will block those comments if they're rude. If they're constructive, totally great. If they're positive, totally great. But I think as women, I want to stand up for not being bullied and not being made fun of and, and not allow that here, especially on this video. So what am I talking about? What is the elephant in the room? Obviously, you can see in the title what we're talking about. I went to the doctor a couple months ago because I knew I needed to get my thyroid checked. I had done some ultrasound scan volunteering. If you are new to my channel, volunteer for, hang on, there's a truck. I really wish this was my, nope, not my delivery. <laughs> really want my delivery. It's not coming until tomorrow. So I, I volunteer for a company that tests ultrasound equipment and then I get paid for that. One of the appointments that I had done they can't give me any medical advice, but every once in a while, like my daughter, they told her that her ele her liver looked a little elevated, looked a little iffy, couldn't tell me what was wrong with it. So we went and had her checked, had some blood work done, pediatrician saw her, everything was fine. She was doing a neck scan and noticed that my glands were really, really swollen. No news to me, I have Hashimoto's. Um, I was diagnosed with that probably about 19 years ago, right after I got married. I finally got a doctor to listen to me on the fact that I could fall asleep like that on the couch after work. Finally diagnosed with that and had been on medication for that for many, many years, probably about 15 years, 16 years. And then probably about my three year mark, four year mark after having Ashley, my OB doctors had always done uh, my monitoring for my thyroid level. And about three or four years after I had Ashley, my OB said, you need to find an endocrinologist now. This is no longer a pregnancy issue. This is no longer, you know, a women issue necessarily. This is an endocrinologist issue. This is an autoimmune, autoimmune disease. You need to go get it taken care of. And then we didn't have insurance for three or four years. And so I let it go and I didn't take care of it and I didn't get on medication. I knew I needed to get into the doctor for that. So I found an endocrinologist. I went into the appointment thinking I was just going in for my thyroid. Sure enough, thyroid came back. Not good. I have hypothyroidism. Again, not new news to me. Going on levothyroxine, same medication I was on before. Um, you take medication in the morning on an empty stomach and you wait about an hour and then you can eat. And it doesn't have any side effects. It just has to be monitored for a long time in order to get the level of medication up to helping your thyroid in the right way. So test the first time, go on medication for three months and then test again. That's what I did the second time I went to the doctor. Okay, we're gonna adjust the medication. And you continue to do that for almost a year as you work through the doses and making sure what your body needs. None of that was new news to me. That's why I went in. What I didn't anticipate finding out was the hardest part of all of this. And part of my frustration in the beginning of this, um, actually throughout all of it, was that my doctor was not open about anything. She was not communicative about anything. And I'll explain that in a little bit. And that was really frustrating and still kind of it. So I did blood work right before that first appointment and then went into the appointment and talked to her about everything. And she said, yes, you probably have a thyroid problem. We'll get you on medication, blah, blah, blah. I never received a call from the doctor after that first appointment and after the, my blood work came in. I just saw the blood lab results come in on my online account through the hospital and saw that I am pre-diabetic. To say that was shocking and scary is like an understatement. I didn't know what to do with that. 
And that's where the, the lack of communication comes in from my doctor. Never called me, nothing. Just put it in the note on my record online, get this medication from your local pharmacy, I'll call it in, take it. That's it, that's all she told me. If you're a doctor out there and you're watching this or if you're going to your doctor for this, talk to them and make them talk to you. I was like, like I don't even know what to tell my husband because he's gonna ask for answers too. He's gonna ask like, what do we do? What do we need to do? change? What do we need to modify? I, I don't know. So we turned to Google, which is the absolute worst thing I could have done. Cause then I just got like rabbit holed in and I was like, I'm gonna die or I'm gonna have diabetes and that like. <sighs> so went on that new medication and it was right at the same time that my mom was dying. That my mom did die actually I should say. And um, I remember um, when you're taking metformin, which is the medication that I'm on, what I didn't understand then is that it tends to make you <laughs> use the bathroom a lot. That's the goal. I didn't know that. So that first month was rough to say the least. And then add to that a funeral being out of town. And so at one point my sister had noticed how like that I was uncomfortable one day and she asked if I was okay. And I, she's a nurse and I just said metformin. She's like, I'm so sorry. She understood. She's a nurse. She knows what it's doing to me. But we were all so emotional that she wasn't able to like, you know what I mean, like talk to me about anything. And I wasn't really like opening up about the actual reason why I'm on it to begin with. So then fast forward to my three month follow up appointment. Went in, got my blood work done ahead of time again, and went back to the doctor the next day and went over the results of that new blood test. Thyroid issue, modifying it, changed the dose, move forward. Nothing new, nothing scary. When I got on the, I hate getting on scales. I hate saying my weight out loud. I hate talking about it. If friends are talking about their diets or keto or their workouts or anything, I leave the room. It makes me so uncomfortable because I know, but it's so hard for me. So when I went back to the doctor, got on the scale, the nurse, I got on the scale and I had said my weight out loud because I had just weighed myself like three months before, right, at the appointment before. I said my weight out loud to the nurse. I said, I don't, it's not gonna have changed very much. So I said the weight and then I looked down and she said, no, you're such and such. I said, oh, then something's wrong with this because that's 10 pounds less than I was three months ago. There's something wrong with that. And she looked at my chart and she said, no, honey, you're on the right track. You are down 10 pounds and it's only gonna get better from here. I didn't know because my doctor didn't tell me. I didn't know what the metformin was for. I didn't know what it was doing. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. So when the doctor came in, um, they were also concerned, um, side note, about my heart rate. I had to, had to text someone right before I came into the doctor's office and I was, I, it was not a good situation. And so my heart was like pounding out of my chest. Um, with anxiety dealing with that situation and so I come in and I get a heart rate and they were like it's off the chart what's wrong with you and I was like I'm fine I'm fine I get my heart checked like every eight weeks when I go and donate blood and I can donate blood every time my heart rate is fine I need you to trust me tested at the end of the appointment but my emotions are very high today it just was a bad day the doctor came in and we start talked about that a little bit and we talked about the weight loss and then, um, you know, she started to ask me what changes I had been making in my diet and in my habit. And I told her that it had been a hard month and a half, a hard three months total since I had first got diagnosed, but a hard month and a half after my mom had passed away. So I told her that I admitted that I had not started walking yet. I had done some a little bit at night with my family when I was in out of town with my family after my mom passed away. I went on walks most nights, but that was had been a hard thing to start doing. And then I came back here and we had excess heat. And then anyway, so I admitted that I hadn't done that. And I said, you know, I've cut down on my soda intake. That's why I have been talking a lot about my drinking Coke and having switched drinking Coke Zero. I hate the taste of Diet Coke. So that's why that whole thing was a thing. It was a joke, not a joke, but it was my way of having the conversation and dealing with it without having to admit why. And that's 
now you guys know why I did that video. Because it was a big change that I was having to make. Seems stupid because it was just soda, but imagine if you drink coffee or if you drink alcohol and you're having to cut those things out of your life. It, it was a big part of what I, you know, like during my day. So I told her that I was down to less than a can of Coke Zero a day and one beverage out and about every once in a while. If you, if you guys know, you know. And that I was learning to look at the sugars in foods and try and eliminate ones that are higher in sugar. I was eliminating breakfast drinks for breakfast. I'm trying to eliminate cereals that have high sugars in them. I'm trying to figure out carbs. Um, and in the middle of this conversation, I just, she asked me something, I don't even remember what, and I just, and I just kind of like stopped and I started crying and I was like, okay, we don't, like I need to back up. You didn't talk to me what to, about what to do. You didn't help me. You didn't, you didn't tell me what, how to like get on a diet. You didn't tell me what I needed to cut out. You didn't tell me anything. You didn't even call me and have a conversation with me about how to change. I had to Google it. I had to ask, ask some of you. <sighs> it was so frustrating. It was so frustrating to me. I said, you're the doctor, and if you can't help me or don't know what to tell me or don't have time to tell me, then point me in the direction of someone who can. I said, because I don't know what I'm doing. And it, these are big changes that I'm having to make in my life. I make potatoes and rice for my family every single day. Like, every day. My husband makes waffles every Sunday. Like, you gotta help me out here. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do this. And she realized her mistake. And she re remembered I didn't call you and I'm sorry I get doing this and I forget who doesn't know. Clearly I'm in this position because I didn't know. Clearly I'm pre-diabetic because I didn't know. Who intentionally gets themselves to a point where they're pre-diabetic? Who does that? I can't see the camera unless my glasses are on. So I want them off but I need to make sure that the screen is focused, focused on me. So we took a deep breath in the office. This appointment was like two weeks ago, you guys. I couldn't deal with it and like talk about it for a long time. She realized that it would be beneficial for me to talk to a, a nutritionist. Whoa, shocking. So she is going, she is putting it through my file and putting in an actual, <clears throat> I get emotional about this because because it meant something to me. Literally put in a prescription for a nutritionist, AKA insurance, cover this. She also put in a prescription for me to go to a gym and have a specialist that specializes in pre-diabetic healthcare that literally works at the gym for this sole purpose. She put in a prescription that will have insurance cover me to go to the gym and get help specifically from that and not some, I don't know. So she said, you wait for them to call you. Your insurance will have to go through and they'll have to figure it out. But this memory card was full. <laughs> I am gonna get through this, I promise. Try and do this fast. I have not heard from the gym or a nutritionist yet. I'm giving it a little bit of time to, I mean, the bureau, you know, the backlog right now with COVID and all that kind of stuff is probably overwhelming. So I'm giving it some grace right now. I will probably put in a request with my doctor, uh, like a message online. I'm not gonna even bother the office. I'll just put in a, re in a message online, just asking to follow up about it, get my kids in school and get them on a routine. And then hopefully I will be able to introduce that as part of my routine. The reason why I wanted to talk about all this is mainly because I've had a few of you reach out to me privately wanting the conversation, wanting to have people to talk to and like we're kind of in the dark in knowing what to do and what changes to make or knowing that the changes we have to make are going to be hard. Like I like chips, like <laughs> I like chips, I like Coke, I like potatoes, I like, these are hard changes to make and I can't make them all at once. I'm not the type of person that can just do that cold turkey and just completely change. Um, maybe I'd be a better person if I was, but I, I think a lot of us aren't that way. I'm looking at things differently now. I just made a dip yesterday that I had had um, last Friday with my friend and it was everything bagel, like yogurt dip from Trader Joe's. And I think I mentioned it in that video. And uh, my friend made it 
just by herself and probably got the big huge container of yogurt from Costco, the Greek yogurt, and then the everything bagel seasoning, which I've never had before. Um, and she made it herself yesterday and I was like, dude, I'm making that. And instead of dipping it with chips, which is my downfall, I went ahead and got some Triscuits. But so I'm not sure if that's a definite trade-off for a carb, but um, it's whole wheat and there's zero sugars and some extra fiber and there's salt of course but I'm just trying to find ways to give me like I don't know it seems stupid but I like food and so like I like a salty crunch so I'm finding ways that will appease that so that I don't feel like I have to like just eat cardboard all the time does that make sense like I still want to enjoy life and have food my daughter yes anyway it's really good and the Greek yogurt is obviously like fat free and it's no sugars, like it's fabulous. So it was a good solution for me to have a little snack at the end of the day and learning to have other snacks instead of candy. I don't like candy necessarily, but what I'm getting at is the gist of what I've seen from comments and, and friends conversations is that I want to have a somewhere to come to like for people and for myself like I need ideas myself what are your things that you're doing and changing and adding in order to supplement something that you can't have right now something that's helping you tricks that you have come up with so that's why I'm doing this whole video and I'm sorry it's extra long but none of my friends know any of this none of my family knows any of this like my sister knows because she knows what the medication is and what it's for I just told all my friends at church what my channel name was. So they might see this. Some of them already know, but they don't watch. I'm putting myself out there in almost every possible way, making me really self-conscious. It makes me want to stay inside for a week and not talk to anyone. Obviously I have to, I have to change and I need help, but I think I'm not alone in that. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm not alone. I know that there at least is some of you and if you're coming to this channel because of this video you've obviously done a search for this so welcome let's have a conversation if you want to have that conversation privately if you don't mind leave a comment below and tell me that you are going to go over and comment on a private DM on my Instagram this is my Instagram it's the same Dana creates it's my public Instagram so you can DM, DM me over there I have a lot of conversations with you private a lot of you privately over on Instagram and I don't mind doing that because it's a safe place. Sometimes in the comments, um, even though you feel like that's private, other people can see it and I don't want you to feel your um, privacy is being invaded. I'm putting myself out there, but you're not. You are in, under no obligation to have those conversations publicly. So if you would like to do that privately, that's 100% okay with me. But let me know in the comment below in this video if you have messaged me over on Instagram because I don't open it up all the time and it doesn't always alert me. Actually, I think I turned off my notifications to have it alert me. So if I start getting a lot, then I'll turn that on. But but also to, if, if you comment on this video, it helps feed this channel to YouTube and that's what I want. I want it to be, I want more women to be aware and maybe men are gonna see this as well. You're more well more than welcome to have the conversation. I think it's maybe a little bit different for women, but who, what do I know? I don't know. I would love to start the conversation and try and help each other out and create a community of people who are going through hard things. And I know that we can do it together. I know that we can like come out on the other end of this um, better people, even if we don't have better A1C numbers. You know what I mean? Like, we can still be better people. I think I forgot to say this, but my A1C numbers improved by one, whatever, one point. So in three weeks or three months, I, I improved a little bit and I lost weight and I'm hopeful. My doctor doubled my medication, which is fantastic. I take it at night now. That seems to help my body better. I, I don't know, I'm probably forgetting something else. Be gentle. If you don't understand what I'm going through and you've never gone through it and you're here just to troll, like I said in the beginning, I'm not gonna have it here. I know I'm overweight. I know I did this to myself, but that doesn't mean that I can't get help. It doesn't mean that I need to be attacked or bullied or insulted. And no one else that happens to comment deserves that either. <sighs> I guess the only reason why I say that is because I've already been made fun of in other videos for my weight. So I'm already sensitive to it and I know that like, this is, I'm such a small channel, so it's only a matter of time before that starts to happen even more. On this, I won't accept it. 
Sorry for the downer type of video. This is why I've been holding it off for a little while because I like to have positive upbeat videos here on my channel, but this is my reality and I've always told you that I would be as real as I possibly can. I'm pretty sure this is about as real as I can get on this issue without like getting on the scale and showing you. That's happening. Take care. Let's like figure out how to do this together and help each other and build each other up. Take care and to all of you who I've already met and talked to about this, I love you. And we're gonna do this. <clears throat> Take care.